battle bright Do steal The way we worked with this album was in a very kind of uh, I suppose organic natural way Basically I wrote all the music and when I felt confident enough to, to let that go um, I'd send them over to Steve and I did this over a two year period um, and Steve kind of digested the music but didn't really have the time to work full time on it. Yeah, I, I used to drive around, um, I, burnt, I burnt the songs to, well the, the instrumentals to, to CDs and drove around listening to them. Um, I really loved, really loved all of it. Um, but didn't know when I'd have time to do anything, but was at the same time desperately keen and desperately conscious of the fact that uh, I didn't want to drop dead not having made an album with Richard Barbieri. So I, I knew, I knew it, you know, it was a fantastic creative opportunity, but couldn't find any time to, uh, to, to, to sit down and develop the ideas further. So I would drive around muttering into my iPhone and singing little tunes and, throwing occasional few lines of words in, um, you know, with a view to when I got a minute, putting it all together. So, first track, Red Kite, was the very first thing I wrote. So, we're probably going back over two years here. Um, and. Very cinematic. I, yeah, language. yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm. I'm not really influenced by other people's work. I don't use other people's work as a template for my own. Um, I'm more influenced by films, books, sounds, atmospheres, emotions, and I usually write most of my stuff during the winter period. So for me, this was a very uh, um, kind of. It was like painting pictures of a landscape. And at the time I was quite interested in Iceland and Scandinavia in general and um, I imagined quite a wide and, and very weird looking landscape as you get in Iceland where it, it just looks like another planet, doesn't look like it's part of, of our Earth. Um, and that, that was it really. Um, I, you know, that was just my kind of inspiration and then Steve yeah, I, I, I heard it like a landscape as well, even though I didn't know that uh, all I heard was the music. But it, I could see a landscape when I heard the music, I could see a wider horizon. And because I was driving around listening to the music, um, I suppose I was influenced by the journeys I was taking and the landscapes I was seeing. Uh, I live out near Oxford and uh, and, you know, driving up and down the M40 occasionally to London and back into some really studio as well. Um, listening to that, it felt very natural to have that soundtrack going on while I was driving, looking out through the windscreen and the landscapes. And so bit by bit, the idea of, uh, of, a, of, of, a, of a bird, you know, of something hanging in the sky, um, being part of the landscape, but at the same time separate from it and observing it, um, and then a, and, and and that moved on to the idea of of cars and the madness of cars. I mean, there's nothing madder than cars, is there really? When, when you think of how many there are and all the silly colours that they're painted and how how fundamental they are to to so many people's. Uh, well, even self-esteem. People, people judge themselves by their cars, don't they? You know, they have to have this kind of car to feel good about themselves. And so there's something very strange about the relationship between human beings and cars. And, and I was thinking of all of these suicidal people going driving down the M40, commuting each day to London, whilst these feral creatures hover above them, looking down at them, um, and feeding off the roadkill. Uh, so Red Cut is essentially about that. You already know. A Cat with Seven Souls. Musically, um, 
it started very much as a groove kind of thing. I'd, I'd found a really nice uh, loop that I liked and I put down a very, uh, quite a massive sort of hypnotic bass line and it was all about a hypnotic trance. I mean, now I listen to it, I can hear a little bit, maybe massive attack, possibly got into my subconscious there. Um, and quite sparse, just brought in little overdubs here and there, but it was just all about this relentless kind of groove that just kept going with a kind of like a fan drum was the main, was the main beat on top. And um, I, I don't know what hopes I had for it, but I passed it on. Yeah, I had a lyric um, called The Cat and Seven Souls. Um, I've written quite a few words over the years about, um, or, or in relation to, that sense of, 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 of feeling like I was more than one person. I'm sure, well, I hope that other people often feel like that too. Um, the Cat with Seven Souls was what they used to call um, Yasser Arafat, the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organisation. They called him that because he, people had tried to assassinate him so many times, and he'd always uh, he'd always lived through through the assassination attempts. So I thought it was quite quite an interesting title for for that subject. This probably is one of the more conventional, from, from my point of view, the composing side, more conventional tracks in that I, I scanned it out as a song. Um, a lot of the tracks on here, some don't resemble songs, some are just narratives, but um, this one had a definite, you know, intro, verse, chorus, and, and a slow kind of build, and um, probably the only song that I composed fully on piano. Um, a lot of the other songs were written in a much more abstract way. Um, so it was, it was in 3-4, which is different to the rest of the album. That's our, that's our only time signature change. Um, and uh, it, listen to it now, it's a bit of an army dreamers thing. It's a bit oh, I loved it from the moment I first heard it. Just, um, just the way the different sonic elements you know, the way it starts up. Yeah. Funny little whatever it is, is it a harmonium or a yeah. kind of kind of I set up some, yeah. some quite odd loops where a drum machine would be controlling loops, so you'd have very sort of odd combinations of sounds, like there'd be a, a, a pump harmonium being triggered as well as a voice. So it'd just go, huh? Yeah, <laughs> and then an electronic or something. Just really odd way of going about making a track. Yeah, it reminded me of vampires doing the waltz. Yeah, like a mad waltz or a circus. A circus. Yeah. Kind of, uh, yeah, slightly dreamlike gothic. League of um, Gentlemen Circus. Yeah, exactly. And the lyrics are kind of. Yeah, I've got a lyric that was originally called Somewhere Under All That Shit, uh, and it was about. Which is not very nice to do. I wouldn't have accepted that. <laughs> well, I did. But, but the idea being that there's this thought of a human being, you know, trapped beneath a pile of garbage, which was actually their life or what had happened to, to bring them to this place and the, the stuff that they have to carry um, and the, 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 that they have to fight through yeah. um, and the fact that beneath all that, Nonsense. Uh, is this naked person? Track number four, crack. This, I, I really didn't know what Steve was going to come up with with this. Um, it's kind of a drum and bass rhythm. Um, and it's quite, um, it's quite odd. Uh, I'm not sure whether it follows any structures that I recognise as, as useful to a vocalist to work with, but um, I gave that to him anyway. It's quite electronic. There's a lot of kind of uh, loops going on. There's a lot of kind of glitchy sounds um, and a very kind of heavy, heavy kind of bass going throughout. 
so I just threw, threw that one out really. Yeah, it, well, it, it, it had the, the original instrumental had such energy uh, and all these exploding kind of synths that um, I thought I thought I should try and find something really radical to to live with it. And uh, I had a lyric um, that, that I've been developing for years and never managed to, to get to work with anything, um, which is about obsessive obsessive love, um, about about how you could about how you could could be so obsessed by someone and love them so deeply that you you, you inevitably drive them away and you, and you know you're going to do that but you can't help yourself. Uh, and I think that, that might have happened to me in the past and it's, it's, I've certainly been victim of it as well. Um, so the idea that I, I'm going I'm to, you know, I'm going to tattoo your name in ten colours across my back, you know, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you over and over and over again how much you mean to me until you leave. To be, to your, be man. your man.